Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. Today, I'm happy to announce open to the public repair workshops that we are doing here at FUTO. At FUTO, we believe that you should have sovereignty and freedom over your hardware and your software. Your hardware and your software should enhance your freedom and user experience, not restrict it and take it away. And one of the things I've talked about for a very long time is how many manufacturers of hardware make it more difficult to work on that hardware. They don't release schematics and diagrams anymore, but above all, that repairability and working on your own stuff is something that's been slowly sucked out of the culture over the past several decades, and it's something that we would like to bring back. And part of that is giving people the means and the ability to work on their own hardware. So I'm very happy to announce that anybody's welcome to come by the address that's in the link down below at any of the stated times and use any of the hardware that we have on these desks to work on their personal property under the supervision of an expert electronics repair person. We will have power supplies, hot air stations, screwdrivers, soldering stations, micro soldering stations, microscopes, multimeters, and more so that you can work on this stuff and we can see what you're doing as you work on it. We want people to feel the joy that comes from making your stuff work again, or even if you weren't able to make your stuff working again, having tried. These workshops are going to be free of charge for anybody who wants to walk in. You don't have to be an expert. You don't have to be a nerd. You don't have to know how any of this stuff already works. All you have to be is curious. There's no judgment here. With that being said, we are going to show you a clip, a preview of how the first one of these went yesterday. It went for about four and a half hours, and I'm going to show you some excerpts from it before we continue to do more. Thank you very much. You are the first person to come in so far. It really makes me want a Lhasa again. I used to have a Lhasa when I was a kid. Oh, what a, what a cute dog. What a cute little dog. Do you have a business card? I should. Let's see. Okay, you're going to have to bring him by. Yeah, I will. For sure. What a cute little doggy. Right, have a good day, sir. You too. Hello. Hi. How are you? Yes. Have a seat. What do you have? What can we do for you? iPhone 6. This one has a broken uh, volume well, connector. Um, I've got an extra I'm going to pull off. The volume flexes are quite miserable. The last time I did one was an iPhone 4 CDMA, and it would take me 45 minutes, and I would break the switcher every single time. What's that? Uh, that's uh, the very edge of the iPhone 6 board where the uh, volume Normally, this is what it would look like if it were proper. Huh. Did you just rip that off now? Um, no, that came off years ago. Okay. Um, I'm about to try and get this one off. That's a donor one? Yeah. Some okay. Random iCloud blocked board I have. Okay, so you could usually harvest a connector. One of the things you want to do is instead of heat it, actually, I'm going to show you on a donor over here. If I'm going to show you on a piece of shitboard, and then you can try it on yours. And I, want, I don't want you to try it on your board. I want you to try it on a shitboard first before you actually do it on that. Okay, so we have a couple of connectors over here. If you heat it from the top, you're gonna melt that because that's all plastic. And it's technically possible to like get it just right where you use just enough heat to melt the solder without the plastic. But if you're a beginner, that's gonna be almost impossible. So what I like to do is cheat. Nobody's gonna notice if you cheat. So what I do is I'll heat it from the bottom of the board and I will grab it with tweezers and like I'll try to slowly push it off with tweezers. So what I do is I take the board off the desk a little bit just like this. I'm gonna have the connector in view over here so that people can see it. Put the fume extractor in front of it so that you don't inhale any of this nasty flux shit. I'm gonna do one, you're gonna do one on a donor and then after you do one or two on a donor then we'll do it on your phone because I don't want you to screw up your phone. All right, so we grab the tweezer And I'm going to tap this periodically. Actually, I'm going to raise my air, my uh, heat up a little bit here. Now the flux is going to kind of clear away. You're also going to wear those goggles when you do it. Don't follow my, my shit example here because flux likes to jump around. Yeah, so I'm the person we should be ignoring. Okay. Now, I'm going to tap it every now and then. And at some point, I should be able to move it off of the solder pads. I don't like to grab it while it's still hot because it's, while it's hot. That's the address that's in the video description that is literally open to the public for anybody to come to. Please, oh God. 
Anyway, I'm not even, I, I can't do that right now. YouTube comments literally burn your brain. Okay, so you move it off of all the pads, like this. And then I wait for it to cool like five or 10 seconds because it's gonna be more likely to you know, get meshed and molded up. And then I pick it off like this. And now I've harvested a connector. So I want you to try that at your station, but with the connector that's right below this over here. So there's another connector on this board. I want you to take this one off. We're gonna, we're gonna practice on a couple and then do yours. Bonus points if you don't burn the desk, but you most likely will because I kind of burn mine. Now something I want you to get used to is l try to look in the microscope instead of at the screen. Looking at the screen is gonna be almost impossible for you. Versus look, it, it's, it's gonna, you're gonna have to be able to look in, inside the microscope while you're doing it. Oh, that's much clearer. So this, okay, one sec, uh, move the, don't, don't burn desk too hard, fire extinguisher comes tomorrow. So move the board a little bit out towards you, maybe about one inch. And you're gonna have to move the microscope as well. Are you familiar with the idea of proprioception? The idea is that if you have your eyes closed and you have your hands out, you should be able to know exactly where you are without having to look at where you are. And you're eventually going to gain that skill where you, can't, you don't see your tweezers in the microscope yet, but you know exactly where they are and how to find your way to what's in the microscope without taking your head out of the microscope to look at the tweezer. But it, that's a skill that's gonna take you a while to develop. Don't grab it, you're just gonna like poke it every now and then just a little bit to see if it's warm enough. But the iron, you're gonna have to, t have to bring the hot air up a little bit, closer to the board. There you go. You're gonna tell when the flux starts to bubble and sizzle a little bit that it's about time for you, the board to move, I mean, for you to, t to tap it. So try to point your hot air up rather than diagonally towards you. Hey, how are you? Hey, how's it going? Is the workshop going on today? Yes. We have an ex... Give me one moment, I'll be right with you. There you go. Okay, now remember to tap it off of the solder pads. You don't want it to get resoldered. And there you go. Okay, now wait a minute before you actually grab it. For it to cool off, this can go back in there. Okay, only a little, my, very tiny minor piece of damage over here, but uh, on the plastic. However, all the pins are perfectly in place. So this would technically work, even though it's not perfect. This is, this is more than good enough. So I would say remove one more, just to get a little bit uh, more acquainted with it. One thing I want you to do is when you take your hot air, and you were pointing it a little bit towards you rather than up at the board. That's why it was taking so long. And one of the things I mean with proprioception is you're going to have to get to a point where you know which way this is pointing without leaving the microscope. Because when you're in the microscope and you have the board over here, like you can't, you can't see through the board, so you don't know if the hot air is pointing. I'll put it so that the people in chat can see. You don't know if it's pointing this way or directly up. And if it's pointing towards you, it's going to take way longer. So let's find another connector for you to take off of that. Is it the good board or the bad board? This one's the good board. Okay, you have the connector? Yes, I actually have two of them because I found okay. the old connector. So this is the good board. I found the uh, old connector that I ripped off. It's still in the volume controls, so that might be useful. I see enough there that we may be able to do something with it. The first thing I noticed, do you see how the, the bottom of the pad is kind of gravelly in nature? So it's, it's not like ripped, it's just gravelly. Sometimes that means you can kind of bring it back. A little bit of gentle scraping, like there's some rust on top of it. Most of your pad is ripped, but since there's a little bit of a nub left, this may actually work and not even need a jumper. Okay. So here we have it. It's attached to the nub. All right. So you have to be very careful in pushing that in because you barely have a pad. Um, I mean, the anchor pads are soldered, so that technically counts. It's gonna get plugged in and not touched again. Okay, so let's see if this works. Are you feeling lucky? Pretty lucky. Seems like it's gonna be One way to find out, right? Hey, it works. It works. Well, she's like, yeah. I haven't had this well, ringer switch working in years. Actually... All right, the first project that actually works. 
Yeah. All right, volume button works. Yeah, switch as well. Perfect fix. Thank you. Congratulations. So hopefully that gives you a bit more of an idea of what this is all about and what it is we're trying to accomplish here. We want people to feel like they have some sense of control over the devices that they purchase. We want people to feel the way that they used to feel, like technology serves them rather than the other way around. The look on that guy's face when he got his volume switch and his rocker to work again was just like, I own this phone, not you, Tim Cook. That's what we want people to feel. And that's what we're going to try to do here every day that we're open. Again. There will be a link in the description down below to several interviews I've done with the founder of Futo if you want to know a little bit more about the philosophy here and what it is we're trying to accomplish. And I will also have a link to schedules for these repair workshops for anybody who wants to come by in the future. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.